this is uh this is gonna be interesting. Oh, 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 you just tore a giant hole right there. This just got more interesting. This is Kimball, this is Ben, and I'm Joe. We three make up the team here at Acorn Land Labs, and this is Off Grid in 30 Days. Okay guys, it's day two of our Off Grid in 30 Days series, and today we've got a lot of really cool things planned. Currently drinking some mushroom coffee stuff that Ben normally drinks. I thought I'd try it. And to be honest, in terms of how it compares to coffee, it's pretty bad. Today we're gonna to be implementing sanitation systems, which will be in the form of a methane digester and a composting toilet. And to even get these systems up and running, we're gonna to have to set up a few other things. For those that don't know, a methane digester essentially works like a cow stomach. There's a one-time input of water and cow manure. Together, we call this a slurry. All the anaerobic bacteria in the cow manure creates an anaerobic environment within the methane digester. So now we can input all of our food waste inside of the methane digester each day, and the bacteria will break it down into two byproducts. One is liquid fertilizer, which is great for the garden, and the other is methane gas, which we use to cook with. Food waste naturally releases methane in a landfill, and methane gas is 25 times more potent than CO2. So by using the methane digester every day, you roughly cut down on six tons of CO2 emissions a year. Lastly, you can connect a flushable toilet to the methane digester, which now is acting like an above ground septic system. And you can see that a methane digester is a lot more affordable than the traditional septic system. Since the methane digester requires 1200 liters of water to function properly, we've got to get a hold of that water. You could do this with rainwater collection, a creek, a stream, a well. Because we already have access to this pond just 30 or 40 feet away, we're gonna pull water from the pond. We don't wanna haul it out manually with buckets. We'd like to use our water pumps. But to use our water pumps to haul all that water up, we need a place to store that water. We're gonna take our IBC totes, which hold 275 gallons of water within them to temporarily store pond water. But we need electricity before we can pump the water out. So we're gonna set up a 400 watt solar panel to connect to the Delta EcoFlow battery system. So we're gonna use solar energy to power the pumps to pull the water from the lake to the IBC totes, then fill up the methane digester, in addition to setting up the composting outhouse to get us off the ground. To understand the inputs and outputs of each system that we'll be implementing today and the cost, I'm going to be using our LandLab simulator, which our team developed this year. You can see that there are already a few systems in here. These are the ones that we added on day one, when we made our canvas belt tent and a few other systems. Now that Kimball's listed out all the systems we need for today, let's go ahead and start with the solar panel. We can see that the input is sunlight, which we have plenty of, the output is electricity, and the cost is about $550. So we'll go ahead and add that in. Next, we'll add in our two IBC totes. We can see that they range about $150 piece. We'll add two of them in there. Next, we'll be looking for a water pump, which I'll just slide down on the side column and select it there. Now I'll search for the methane digester. We can see all the inputs we'll be needing for it, and if we take a close look at the inputs, it's showing that we have all the water we need for the methane digester, because the sim knows about the pond that I put on our site. So now that I know the inputs and outputs of each system, let's go ahead and order them. All I have to do is click on the system, then press on the link where the cost is. So if we access the system summary, we can now see the total of all the systems we have on site. And by viewing the human needs checklist, we see that we have plenty of water on site. The only issue is none of it's drinking water, because we haven't implemented a purifier yet, which we'll be doing next episode. So after adding Adding in today's systems, we see we have an overall off-grid score of 55. And after also adding in the composting toilet, we can see that we're up to $5,835 out of our $25,000 budget. Now that everything's planned out, it's time to start on the solar panel. got our 400 watt solar panel behind me. The solar panels typically generate 12 to 24 volts of power. So you've got to take that power and then run it to a battery system, often 12 or 24 volt. Then that power goes to an inverter to become 120 volt, power that we typically use with household appliances, like the pumps that we're about to connect. So I've got the connecting cables here to connect that 400 watt solar panel to our 1.3 kilowatt EcoFlow battery inverter combo pack. And that gives us a very simple but affordable way of converting electricity from sunlight right here for the off-grid build. Now we just need to connect our water pump to a hose, put one side of the water pump into the pond, connect it to power, and then connect the hose to our IBC totes, which will complete this entire setup. These IBC totes are all food grade. That's critical. Even though we're putting pond water in them, we want them to be free of any type of diesel fuel or formaldehyde or toxic chemicals. 
These used to contain corn syrup and then syrup for like ginger ale. So these are totally food grade, safe to use. We buy these from a supplier up in Atlanta. Um, you can likely find these in any like mid-sized to major city near you. Now that we have the solar and IBC totes set up and all the water we need filling up the IBC totes for the methane digester later, it's time to go ahead and get cracking on the composting toilet because it's going to take a while for these IBC totes to fill up. I've got the trusty clippers again. To make the composting toilet outhouse more secluded and private, we're going to cut a little path towards the magnolia tree that's farther into the woods. That keeps the composting toilet outhouse a little bit more off the beaten path just to promote more privacy. Sometimes the loppers are just a little too slow. I've been going full frugal recently. I made a bunch of beans and rice last night in the Instant Pot. We're heating things up in the ghost sun. You can see it's already steaming, so it's almost lunchtime. So Ben was just raking in here and he uncovered an old disc golf disc. I used to play back in the day. Let's see if I still have it. All right, this is for all the people that said I couldn't go pro. Well, after affirming the reason that I'm not a pro disc golfer, it was time to build a composting toilet. This is not the only toilet we'll be building out here. In a future episode, we're going to show how you can connect the toilet to the methane digester. And even though I'm the cameraman, I made sure I did my part. All right, let's explain all the elements of our composting toilet canvas outhouse. We've pieced all this together to make a really well-functioning outdoor bathroom with a canvas enclosure. We just made a simple deck out of decking boards and then two by fours. We set that on pavers, the tiny mobile foundation. We're using a nature's head compost toilet. That is the beating heart, the gem of the composting outhouse. Then we've got our five gallon bucket of peat moss. The peat moss is what you mix into the toilet for number twos to soak up excess moisture and then just to dry it out to where it starts turning into soil. The composting toilet diverts urine from solid waste. That's the magic of the composting toilet. When you mix those together you get disgusting sewage. If you keep them separate you can use both elements to fertilize trees, bushes, and whatnot. Then we've got the canvas shell of the canvas outhouse. The canvas shell was $300. We ordered that online. Then we had to go purchase metal electrical conduit. That conduit is the frame for the outhouse. We did have to buy that separately. It was not included in the canvas outhouse. House. We've got a pedal powered sink that can contain a few gallons of water down below. You use your foot to push the pedal and it sends water up to the sink area where you can wash your hands. We've been super happy with it. We bought ours for about $90 online. I love how elegant it is and you don't need municipal water to supply it. We have the five gallon bucket of charcoal. That's where the air from the fan in the composting toilet is vented. That soaks up any small odors that might still remain. People can sometimes be a little leery of composting toilets. We want to show just how slick this setup can be. The composting toilet requires 12 volt power to run a small fan. The fan keeps solid waste dried out. That is part of the effectiveness of the composting toilet. Now that the composting toilet is finished, it's time to wrap up the methane digester. As we can see, the IBC totes are now full of water, meaning we can start the pumping process into the methane digester. One of the important parts to a methane digester are the sandbags on the top because they pressurize the methane to send it to the cooktop stove. Okay, so we need sand for the methane digester. Here's the problem. All the sand around this pond is actually just on one end of it and all of our neighbors have private property so we can't walk through it. So anyway, we're gonna send Ben to go get it. Okay guys, so I got my kayak, I got the little raft. I'm gonna tie the raft to the kayak. I have a shovel and then a bucket for the sand. I'm excited. Yep, you just tore a giant hole right there. Well, we have two. Will it work? While the SS Benjamin sails the high ponds looking for sand, we're gonna set up a small fire pit here to start burning down the brush pile, create a little bit of ash to add to the compost, 
and just build the campfire that we've been wanting out here. So while the methane digester is being filled up with water and Ben is getting sand, a lot of you might be wondering how we also got the cow manure for the methane digester. Kimball and I actually went out and asked a farmer if we could use his cow manure from his cows. And he said yes, even though he thought it was kind of weird. And I really can't blame him. So the methane digester is filling with water now. Even though it's cloudy outside, we're still getting about 60 watts of power coming out of the solar panel. Charging the battery, the battery's powering the pump, pump's moving the water. We've got brush burning down there while Ben's getting sand to pressurize the methane digester. All right, I'm gonna go check on Ben, see where he's at with the, uh, with the sand. Hey, dude. Wait, like, wait, what? Like, like weird goopy sand. I'm afraid to step on it. Well, okay. So we ended up having to go get sand somewhere else, and then we started on the slurry. Delicious. How is that uh, working out for you? Pretty good. Shovel just fits in the bucket. It's like a giant Vitamix for crap. Mr. I'm sitting inside editing videos while Ben and Kimball work on slurry is outside now. Hey, I, someone has to edit all these videos. Joe is going to mix the last bucket of slurry. We saved you half a bucket of grade A cow poop. Nice. We're gonna need you to shovel this into that five gallon bucket. Then I'm gonna turn on the water pump so you can mix the slurry. You see my hands, Joe? Hey, don't forget, I was the one that went and picked this up with you, okay? That's true, he did. Cut to that footage. I've got my bucket here, and I've got my shovel. I'm gonna go scoop some poop. I love the methane digester, so this is like a rite of passage, right? Oh, I already got it on my finger. Ugh. Put that in a bucket. I feel like this is like off-grid hazing. <laughs> and then you can use your weapon of choice to stir it. You wanna know what freedom sounds like? Ben, what'd you think? Uh, it was pretty fun. Was it really? No, it was a little, little gross.